Uh, let's start with Jaden Daniels, one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league right now, Colin. He has completed 82% of his passes through four games, which is the best mark in NFL history. Uh, Tom Brady had set the previous record in 2007 at 79%. He won the MVP that year. We're not going to talk MVP today. But Jaden Daniels has been lights out. This was a game I was way, way wrong on. I yep. liked Arizona Same a lot. Here. Felt confident. And uh, it was 7-7. And then Jaden Daniels took the game over and was like, we're like, going to score every sometimes, time. Sometimes, like I keep waiting for the bubble to burst a little bit. I mean, listen, Minnesota, I buy because of all their weapons, the coach and the defensive coordinator. I knew Kingsbury loved Jaden Daniels, and I predicted Washington would make the playoffs. I said, they'll surprise people. They're better than you think. You start looking at Jaden Daniels. Here's the thing that I can't get over. It's not that they're moving the ball. It looks so effortless. They're not getting their running backs off and don't hit contact for four yards. Their wide receivers are wide open. So this, a lot of this, Jaden's terrific, but a lot of this is scheme. Yes. Kingsbury is literally, it feels like Cliff Kingsbury as a coordinator, he's like a year ahead of the league on something. The stuff is, we didn't think they had a dominant O-line. That was one of their concerns coming into the season. No, was a weak O-line, and it's been outstanding. It literally <laughs> looks like the Cowboys when Dak broke into the yeah. league. There's massive holes. And Jaden, you know, we, we said, and I was told this by a scout, that he's got a little Lamar Jackson. I see some RG3, man. I don't know. I, I see know. Our rookie year RG3. Yeah, I see Tom Brady, 82% from the pocket. Better than What's Lamar. going he's, on? He's crushing. Um, listen, I, I don't want to go too overboard with Daniels. I will say he's faced some of the worst he defenses has. He in has. the league. He has. That's Let's why. just be real. That's this why is not I'm, critical. The, the, this is a real. It's a fact. He's faced, like, only bottom 10 defenses, Colin. I know. But even that said, 82%, yeah. wow. you're, you're watching this stuff too. Like, it looks like flag football with the seniors against the sophomores. Yeah. Now, okay, now it gets a little tougher. But does it? Is Cleveland better? Well, okay, so remember last Monday I came on here and I said Chicago's the play. And I was locked that up. And I said Tampa against Philly. That was yeah. the other one. I think you got to take the Browns and the Jim Schwartz defense against... Jaden Daniels. Okay. Here. This will be the best defense he's faced by far. Okay. Cleveland will not be a walkover. Um, I know Cleveland's tough to back right now. They You go ahead the, and back them. The vibes are about as bad for Cleveland as they are for anyone in the league right now. See Deshaun Watson and his, his offensive oh, line. No, no, no. no. It. Yeah, it was um, brutal. But shout out. Hey, Cliff Kingsbury, you said scheme. I think that's the perfect word, Colin. You look, Go look at that Jets take game. Every Aaron Rodgers throw contested. There was a cornerback right on the play. Washington's dudes are wide open all day. So I, I guys I've never heard of Jeremy McNichol or something like that. McNichols, yeah. Running back? Steve Keim told me he said I don't know if Cliff has the personality and temperament to be a great head coach. He says when you free him up, he told me this when he took the job in Washington. When you can just let Cliff design and call plays, he said he is going to be. He'll get other head coaching offers. He may not be built temperament wise for the head coach. He struggled at that, managing the egos and the, you know, yeah. the crises. But he said, as a play caller, and Steve was a former offensive lineman, he said, he's brilliant. You're not going to believe what Washington looks like. That's what Steve told me before the season. He said, just let him call plays mm -hmm. and design them and just work with the offense and not have to regulate and manage players. Kingsbury is ahead of the league right now on stuff. You okay, so let's talk about this. I was so excited when this game unfolded because... I predicted it. Um, I said this, you know, when they were kept, when both of them, J Mac and Collins, said that the commanders aren't going to win this game and this and that. And I went on a whole thing talking about, listen, Cliff Kingsbury, um, he's going back to Arizona. He wants this game so badly. The team wants it for him. The coaches want it for him. Jaden wants it for him. I'm going to show you the clip, a short little clip of what I said on there. Um, and I gave a whole big talk about it. And a lot of people doubted. A lot of people, commanders fans, of course, were. Um, agreed, obviously, with saying that Jaden is great and all of that. But then a lot of people came at me and said, oh, this has nothing to do with Cliff Kingsbury. You know, Cliff Kingsbury is fine with Arizona. He's got no issues with Colin Murray. Look what that they're saying in the media. And um, yeah, if, if that was the case, please, uh, please tell me then. Um, tell me what, what, what is this then, if, if that is the case? Oh, is that the game ball? Oh, is that Cliff Kingsbury? Is that the whole locker room going nuts for cliff kingsbury 
literally exactly what I said was going to happen. I said they wanted to get this win for him. I said Jaden. I said Dan Quinn. He literally, you know, they embraced him because this, you know, this is what I had said season and also just where the commanders are. Um, I wonder if Cliff Kingsbury will be able to offer any insights, obviously being the head coach of the Cardinals and Kyler Murray, and if he has any um, insights on any of Kyler Murray's weaknesses or or how to slow him down, how to stop him. But also, right, this is also the return of... Um, Kyler uh, of Cliff Kingsbury, right? And 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 being fired and used as a scapegoat and and Kyler Murray really kind of continuing to like pretty much rub dirt on him after he fought, you know, long after he was let go and all of this. And so, you know, Cliff Kingsbury really wants to win this game and you know the team wants to win for Cliff. You know, we always see these teams rally behind them and I compared it kind of to a similar experience although not exactly, but similar experience to Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions trying to beat uh, Matthew Stafford and the Lions. Obviously, the stakes are much lower considering it's not a playoff game and all of that. But I do think that the commanders will use that as a little bit of a rallying cry, right? They're going to use the momentum that they had against the Cincinnati Bengals and that big, massive win, and they're just going to be super high on it. And, you know, they're going to try to continue that momentum and they, they're going to want to get that win and, and i believe that jane daniels is probably developing a legitimate relationship with cliff kingsbury and he's going to feel like i want to win for coach i want to i want to win for my guy you know like i want to win for the guy who's helping me achieve my literal dreams in the nfl right now um they're going to want it and dan quinn's going to want it want it for his guy as well the, the commanders as a whole are going to want this win so you're they're going to get their best effort you know what does that look like i i really don't know yeah, and I would say uh, winning 42 to 14 and giving Cliff Kingsbury sounds like they got their best effort. Um, everything Cliff was doing with Jaden was just next level. That game was, I mean, uh, I, the Cardinals were never in it. I understand at one point it was 7-7 or whatever, um, and I have all my notes that I'm not even going to go through, honestly, um, because it was just it was just pure domination. I mean, I mean, the way how that offense was humming along, um, with the commanders and and the play calling of Cliff Kingsbury and the execution, I, I mean it was just it was just outrageous. I mean it it, it really really was. Um, it, it, they just ran, they threw touchdowns, two point conversions. I mean like that's the thing. It's like I have a whole bunch of notes, but it's like it's no point even going over it because it's just like what did Jaden do? Uh, he could throw the ball perfectly. What what could the offense do? Um, they could block perfectly. They could run. Um, play calling, perfect play calling. You know, like everything was just perfect. It was just literally perfect start to finish. Um, it, it's just the the defense made Kyler Murray uncomfortable the entire game. Um, uh, the commanders were just converting on anything they wanted. It was just it was just it was just wild. I mean, it, you know, they had two hundred rushing yards. And 47 of them came from Jaden himself. Um, obviously, as you can see, he just continues to dominate from a completion percentage, right? 86.7% completion percentage. I, I just, all of their drives were so, it was just so effortless. Um, it, it's just, you know, t just to start the way they're starting and the way they continue, because that's the thing. Sometimes a team can start off hot. And I mean, like within a game and um, things kind of settle, right? And it just feels like, okay, that drive was really easy, right? And it was like, okay, it was one drive. Those things happen. Scripted plays right beginning of the game. And especially young teams, a lot of times a young team can thrive in that situation, right? A young quarterback, young coach, whatever it may be. And they can, you know, they're good at the scripted stuff, right? The stuff that they've really been working on going into this game. And then once they get deeper into the game, you know, second quarter, third, fourth quarter, when things aren't as refined, it's like, all right, right? We're going a little bit more off script now. It's a little bit more freestyle, play calling, just everything. And that's what's so crazy about the commanders right now is because you would expect, considering some of, you know, like a Cliff Kingsbury and a Jaden Daniels talents and, and level of, of quarterback play, you would say, okay, I understand why they're going to be really good um, opening drives, first quarter. You know, I, you, you could see why they would be able to, to be able to score a lot. But then when you see them continue that momentum and that rhythm and that high, high, high level of success in the second and third and fourth. And, you know, no matter who they're going up against, that's when it starts to get really, really impressive um, and ex and just exciting. Um, so th this team is just rolling. Um, I got really nothing negative. I always try to find at least like some negatives just in terms of, you know, trying to hold teams to a high standard. 
Um, I do it with the best teams and the worst teams, right? It's always trying to look at everything from a complete picture. Um, I guess technically the one negative is, is like kind of what Jay Mack is saying about that they're playing some of these teams with bad defenses or whatnot, but I don't know if that's 100% true necessarily. Like he's saying that they're facing all these bottom 10 defenses. And, and again, that, that does help you, right? That, that absolutely undeniably helps you, but it helps every team, of course. Um, I'm not so sure the Browns are really as great of a defense as people think they are. Um, so I, I don't know if the Browns are really going to be that much of a problem. Seeing what they do against the Ravens is going to be interesting. That is going to be a tough game. No matter how great you are, just look what the Bills did, right? So like, even if the Ravens dominated the com the commander, it wouldn't even really be that big of a deal to me. But that is going to be an interesting game. Um, I'm really excited to see the levels of adversity um, of the commanders, you know, because I have to imagine that for at least part of the game, Jaden Daniels is going to be uncomfortable, frazzled. Cliff Kingsbury is really going to have to prepare hard. Same thing with Dan Quinn. Time of possession can kind of get out of control. Like that game has the potential to get out of control, especially it's on the road. So I'm just really excited to see what Jaden Daniels and the commanders can do. Again, it might be a bridge too far at this point in their um, in his respective career, as well as just the, the personnel around that team. The team is only, you know, only has so many weapons at this point. So it's just going to be an interesting game again, win or lose. I mean, win, I'm going to learn a ton lose. I'm going to be like, okay, like, you know, the, 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 the Ravens have been at this for years now, right? Like they're, they're ahead, you know, so they should be able to. So it's just going to, that, that's going to be an interesting game, but if they survive that, you know, Panthers, that can be a win. The Bears, I've been excited for that since the moment the schedule got released. That could be a win. The Giants a win. The Steelers a win. The Eagles, if they're full strength, that should be a tough divisional game. But if they're not, who knows? They could roll them as well. Cowboys, I don't really think are that good. Titans, not good. Saints are going to be interesting. Do they kind of regain their momentum of being good? Eagles, obviously, already talked about. And then the Falcons, who are the Falcons at Week 17? And same thing with the Cowboys. So I look at the schedule and I'm like, they could be competing for the division. I mean, I already said at the beginning of the season that I think that they're going to make the playoffs, but it's like, again, depending on what's going on with the Eagles and Cowboys, they could be legitimately um, competing for the division, which really obviously puts them majorly ahead of schedule. And I said this in my previous video, and hopefully I get the opportunity to make another Jaden Daniels Washington Commanders video for first things first, so I can also do my little victory lap. I just got to, because sometimes you call a take so correctly sometimes you just get lucky sometimes you're like i think the commanders are gonna win right and it's like okay does that mean like you get to do a victory lap just because you said you thought a team was gonna win when you had a 50 50 chance of getting it right but like everything i just said was so spot on that i was like i gotta i gotta marinate in this i gotta i gotta i, I you know i've just been for whatever reason i've just been 100 percent accurate with the washington commanders i don't know why but i just i just have been um i've i just for whatever reason i guess i understand them pretty well so um I got them making the playoffs. I got them fighting for the division. And, um, right, depending on who the matchup is, I can see them winning a playoff game as well. I can see them having a similar trajectory as the Houston Texans last year. But let's face it, I think what the commanders are doing and Jaden, what Jaden Daniels is doing is better than what C.J. Stroud did with the Houston Texans. Do they have enough of a team? Will they be lucky enough from a health perspective going deeper in the season? That will, of course, be the big question mark. But... Man, you have to feel good if you are a Washington Commanders fan. I think that the era of the Commanders being irrelevant is officially over. And the only thing that stops the Commanders now moving forward into the future from being a regular contender and a legitimate threat to constantly win the NFC East regularly will just be injuries, right? Just be injuries, which is obviously like that with any team. Um, so that's just an exciting place to be. But those are just my thoughts. I'd absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about the Washington Commanders and Jaden Daniels setting an NFL record with the highest completion percentage? Just everything they're doing. Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.